We're gonna use this cool little box here that uh, I helped design to do some draw force curves today on a few different risers and limb setups and see what kind of data points we can come up with. So big thanks to Tristan for helping me with designing this draw force curve device. I designed the enclosure and made that in Fusion 360 and then 3D printed it, sent it to him because he knows all sorts of stuff about our Arduino based products. And we've got a few different things in here. This is actually a bow scale uh, load cell that I took out of my bow scale and uh, printed this case. That's why I didn't have a bow scale for several weeks in case people were wondering, because I hogged it out and stole the load cell for putting inside this enclosure. There's a load cell amp in here, a uh, Artemis Arduino based board, and then an infrared sensor up front. That's why there's a hole in the front here. And basically, I just plug it into this computer here behind me, hit go and use my draw force bur uh, board to draw it back and uh, gets me some data points. And then I export it to an Excel spreadsheet, make a graph and I get a draw force curve. I did a test already on a Velos here, uh, Velos set up on this Exceed riser on the floor that you can't quite see, it's just off camera. And it worked excellent. Throughout the draw, I went from brace height to about 32, 32 and a quarter inch of draw length or so and it took somewhere in the neighborhood of 270 data points throughout that draw length. And the really cool thing about that test uh, curve that I did, there is straight lines drawn between each single point. There is no correction, there is no nothing, and it's as perfect and data-driven as you could possibly get. So again, my hat's off to Tristan for helping me out. He's one of my patrons, and uh, you know we were talking back and forth through my Discord server for much of this design, and it really turned out excellent, so I can't thank him enough. And if you are interested in becoming a patron uh, of my channel, there is links in the description below. And I'm gonna try to put a card at the top up there for it as well. Lately, I've been having issues posting those on YouTube for some reason, I'm not entirely sure why. But uh, we have a great Discord server that many, many people communicate back and forth and talk to each other uh, to try to help with tuning and equipment and setup and all sorts of different things and ideas like this come about, which I am very excited about. For the very first draw force curve on this channel, or at least the comparison video, I figured since I've got this setup here, this Exceed with these Velos limbs that I have tuned and I really enjoy, uh, I'm gonna change the limb rocker settings and get different draw force curves for the different limb rocker settings and we'll see what happens. Um, right now you can see I have a target right here. This is uh, actually a riser plate that I was going to be measuring riser deflection with and it works out to be a perfect target for that infrared sensor to bounce off of and get some good readings off of and it does it quite consistently. So I'm going to remove the plunger and put a bolt there instead so I don't break the plunger off on this draw peg here for the draw board that I'm using. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to get right into it. And right now it is on the weakest setting. So I'm gonna go weak, then middle, and then the stiffest or the performance setting. And then I'll uh, put them on the screen and overlay them so you can see you know, how different the draw force curves are or aren't uh, from these limb rocker setting changes. And I think it'll be fun to see. I'm also gonna be doing a bunch of different limb ratings. I'm going to rate the SX Plus limbs from UCA. The, I have uh, Evo, two uh, limbs from Uka. I've got these Gilo limbs behind me. I've got MXT limbs. I've got a whole bunch of limbs that I'm gonna do a bunch of ratings. And when I can, sooner than later, uh, at least I'm just gonna get the raw data up on my website, jakekaminski.com for you to check out. So that way you can compare and contrast risers and limbs and setups from my flex testing that I do on risers to torsional stability on limbs to draw force curves now on limbs as well. I'll put all that information on my website very shortly. I will send a email out through my email list that's attached to my website. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for that, do so. So that way you're notified when I do upload all of that data for you guys to check out. And hopefully I'll be able to find some really nice visual 
aids to put on there for you guys to have drop down windows and compare and contrast stuff eventually but that's not quite in the cards yet. So now I'm gonna get ready and set up for drawing back this uh, Exceed and Velos combination with the different limb rocker settings and see how much of a difference it makes. All right, so I'm basically set up here. I am going to leave it at this brace height, always in these limb bolt positions as well when I do the limb rocker setting change on this bow here. And I have got a camera on the computer screen so you can see it. I don't have OBS downloaded on that yet, so I'm not rec recording the screen that way yet. I just wanted to show you kind of some of the data sets that come in when I hit go on the whole thing. It's actually pretty neat. So what you can see now is it's actually giving a bunch of sample rates of distance. The first number before the comma is the actual distance in just a numeric value. I always zero it at uh, brace height or I give a measurement at brace height or the starting area to the plate. And then I do a calculation based on the draw length, uh, basically to AMO standards. So that's from the pivot point and an inch and three quarter forward of that. So everything is related to draw length is going to be at a specific AMO draw length, give or take. So I'll reference that where the peak is on each graph that I do and I'll cite the starting point essentially wet brace height, which will be probably around nine inches, at least on long limbs. So you can see that first data column is moving around all over the place, goes from basically zero when I have the sensor covered to a whole lot of numbers, you know, depending on how far away or close to an object it is. And then also the second number after the comma with a, uh, a digit dot zero zero, that is weight. And so now you can see the weight of the scale and so on. Now, as far as the accuracy of the draw weight itself, I rated it against my crane scale and actually calibrated it to my grain scale, or my crane scale rather, excuse me. So that's the scale that I use to draw the bow backs, draw all the bows back to rate them. Um, so I figured it'd really be important for me to have apples to apples when I'm you know, comparing things. Is that scale rated? No. Is this scale rated? No. It's not important. What's important is the curve of the graph itself, not the actual weight at those graphs, because all it's going to be doing is rating what it's seeing and then calculate that and put that on a curve. And then you'll actually see how the limb force is changing as it is being drawn back through different ramps and valleys, not really valleys, but kind of plateaus almost. All right, so I'm gonna basically just kind of hook this up and you can see it's already got a little bit of a baseline weight there. When I pull it forward in this kind of position and just hold it uh, so it's not doesn't have the weight of the actual unit against itself, it goes to you know roughly a third of a pound, give or take. So I'm gonna... And I actually decided to increase the surface area just so there is no distractions from the lights. Uh, now that I'm running the camera lights, there's a little bit of feedback, I guess. Uh, so because it's interfering with the infrared sensor slightly. So now that I have this bigger piece of wood, which is what I use actually to do my riser flexing. It looks like my numbers are, yeah, they're a lot more stable now. So now I'm gonna run this and you'll be able to see how it actually goes. Now the draw force, the draw board rather, is a rather slow, but that means I get more data points and a more accurate and consistent draw force curve. I'm gonna start always the same. and I stop at the same place every time. While I'm here, this is uh, marked by my draw board here. So I have a good mark and a good indicator as to what I'm actually drawing the bow back to. So it's 25 and 3 eighths. Let me make sure I'm drawing it back enough. Plus 1.75 to the pivot point, plus 1.75 forward. That's only a 28 inch draw length. I need to go much further. So this is where my end point is going to be. I'm gonna measure it so that way we can have this as a reference. Just so you guys know, I have an indicator on the actual draw board. So I'll be able to see how far it gets drawn back to and make sure it gets drawn back to the same place. Right now we're 29 and a quarter inches from the plate to the string plus 1.75 to the pivot point plus 1.75 to the actual AMO draw length, and you get 32.75.
So I'm gonna cycle all of my limbs back to 32 and three quarter inches for those long draw archers, just to make sure we get every tiny little bit out of this. Now this is gonna cover the vast majority of shooters. I know some shooters have longer draw lengths than this, but this is gonna be a great starting point. So I'm gonna let the bow back down and I'm gonna start this whole scenario over for real and we'll get our very first draw force curve with these limbs in the light position. Okay, here's the first official draw force test. Uh, I've got everything all set up. I'm gonna start at roughly a half a pound, give or take, as you can see by the scale uh, right there. It's, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, it's, it's pretty close. Maybe I'll bump it in touch. There, right about a half a pound is where I'm gonna start. Everything is automated. All I need to do is give a start cue and I do that by waving my hand in front of the distance center sensor and that's when I know to start. Okay, and that is it. Now I need to pause it really fast. That way I can come back to it. I'm gonna let this down. And then I'm gonna uh, copy and paste all that data into a text file basically, and then I can run my draw force curve. I won't be able to see that. I won't be able to see it. You guys can see it already. Uh, but I won't be able to see it until I get back in the house and run these data figures. Okay, so now I got it on the uh, medium limb rocker setting here. So we'll see how much this changes. I'll have to go inside and do a calculation on all of this and then come back and give you guys some thoughts on what I think about this because I honestly have no idea what to expect here. I'm gonna assume we're gonna see some sort of difference at the top and the very bottom as well. But it'll be interesting to see what happens in that mid range. All right, now I'm gonna let this down <clears throat> and do the same thing that I did and do it in the stiff setting as well. And here we go. And hopefully this device is sensitive enough, which I do believe it is, to see a difference. So. After I let this down and create a file from that draw force curve, I will head back inside and uh, see what happens and how much of a difference it makes. And I'll come back out and talk to you guys about it and show you all three graphs overlaid. It'll be pretty fun and I'm excited. So I reviewed all of the data and I had to make some slight adjustments to the rig. I came down here and put things in slightly different positions just to maintain this thing's position because any sort of adjustment this way uh, definitely affects the readings. So I had to make some minor, minor adjustments, but those are all taken care of. And I actually got a pretty good result of the draw force curves for this Exceed riser to see if the limb rockers make a difference. And they do. I do see a slightly lower draw weight throughout the entire curve, especially more towards the very end compared to, on the soft setting compared to the stiff setting. You know, about three tenths of a pound, just like I saw on the screen on the crane scale. So I'm happy that it reflects what I saw with peak draw weight change, uh, but it's actually th almost throughout the entire curve, which is pretty interesting. And just for fun, just for giggles. I decided, hey, I'm gonna throw some SX plus limbs on. That's why they're on the bow right now. And I did the draw first curve with those. Although I did not change tiller, brace height, limb position, anything like that. Uh, and that was on the full stiff position as well. So it was neat just to see, cause I wanted to see, you know, I was comparing three basically identical setups with a slight change in the limb rocker position. And I can barely see a change in the curve. But when I threw on different limbs, I can really see a different change in the curve. So I'm happy to see that I'm actually seeing the actual curve. It's going to be fun to have some different data points to look at when testing and setting up different setups and see if draw force curves reflect what I feel. So again, I'm going to put a lot of information in the future. I haven't had time yet, to be honest. But uh, to get all of this data that I'm finding from riser flex testing to torsional limb stability and draw force curves and some other stuff that will be eventually coming out in the future, that will be all posted on my website, jkaminski.com. 
And while you're at it, if you wouldn't mind, check out all the ways that you can support this channel. It links in the description below, plus at my website, jkaminski.com. I genuinely appreciate everybody that has supported me in this channel and allowed me to develop more of this type of stuff. You know, it really has helped me produce better content, uh, come up with some better data, and do more things regarding this channel. I am, in the future, uh, the very near future, we'll be switching into more of a full-time gig doing this type of stuff. And genuinely, the people who are supporting uh, me and my channel who have bought books or apparel or anything in regards to supporting me and this channel, it's made a big difference and I'm genuinely gonna keep pushing and there is a whole lot more to come. So, thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.